earth. He didn't seem like a flat earth guy. Leaving round earth? Well, let me tell you something. The earth's not flat or round. It's shaped like a half pipe. I will prove it. Time of the dinosaurs, the earth was at one time flat. When it was flat, the asteroid comes down to strike the dinosaurs, glides into the earth, right? Breaks apart the supercontinent, Pangaea, into the seven continents that we have today. All the dinosaurs are super sensitive to like natural cataclysmic events. So they know the asteroid is gonna strike one end of the earth. So they move all the way to the other end. When the asteroid strikes, what do you think happens? Dinosaurs into outer space, where there's no oxygen and they die because that's not the way physics works. Somewhere near the fulcrum, or gravity is real, but gravity is a fact. Rebounds off the earth and that asteroid that killed the dinosaurs becomes our moon. So the earth is shaken up, dust to dirt, plants can't grow, dinosaurs have no food. They dug down to find Middle Earth where the hobbits lived, trying to barter or find food. And so far that their holes collapsed in on themselves, that's what makes the earth. Whoa, see this hat? I'm gonna put this up. She a trophy. Beauty. Trapper Dan will be back for that. Anyways, that's what makes the earth such a totally rad, sick place to live. Take that well, I have. I've taken it to conventions called Half Pipe Earth Society, where we knew we were being lied to by the sorcery elite and Illuminati and flat earthers and round earthers. Everybody's in on it. The telecommunications. Earth bounces the signals off itself, back at itself, and that's how it works. Gravity. Water always seeks its lowest point. I mean, I'm just talking sense here. Like Harry Potter, leading practicing Satanist. And JFK, he's a robot, just like all the birds. The birds stopped existing in 1990 when the government killed them off. They're all just, whoa, porcupine, holy shit. Look at this, uh, everywhere. Dude, I bet it was a fisher. Those things kill a machine. Look, there's even some gutsy wutsies here. Yeesh, attacked him by the butthole first. That's a hell of a way to go. Don't get any of those in your sneaks. This thing got spread out. Killing machines. For the first time I saw one, I thought it was a chupacabra. But once we get too many fishers, they'll release something else. I don't know, maybe a giant bird, they'll bring those back. The world's got a lot of crazy people in it, man. You gotta stay on your toes. Oh, nice tippity toes. You know, Thomas Jefferson once had a pet porcupine. Anybody who writes that many documents either has a computer or a lot of quills. I can't. <laughs> Maybe I'll look it up later online. So you had a porcupine named Princess, over a hundred, and she's still living today, but you just don't know her as Princess. You know who she is now? Phil, a Punxsutawney. Because she's a sesquicentennial being, eternal like a manatee, you know, because you're woke. Yeah, government protection for the inner circle is actually just a secret service. And Princess, whose quill wrote both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of America. You know, the first sleepover in America was at George Washington's house around the time Ben Franklin invented the first Hot Wheels loop-de-loop. -loop. They were like, yo, we can't go home, Martha. Some bagel bites and pizza rolls. Tippity toes. I would wager that Solomon's are the new, New Balance N625s. You know, you got a funeral or classy church thing to go to, you put your new ones on, you know, and then you use your old ones to mow grass. The greatest dad shoes ever. New Balance N625. See a grown ass man wearing one of those? You already know what he's wearing. He's wearing cut off jean shorts that cut just above the knee. And like playing sports, but now he's all about putting toys together for the kids. He's got a white t-shirt on. It fits over just a little bit of a beer belly. He's got a spatula in his hand. And the first thing he says to you when you pan up to see his face is, hey there, Dan, you want a Coke or a Pepsi? And, and after you reply with your choice of, of sizzly beverage, he asks if you want a burger or a dog. Like I came out here to get punched in the nuts. I'm not saying I would sleep right here either, but you know, George Washington used to use rocks as a pillow. That's why his teeth are so fucked up. What's your favorite George Washington story? Where he uses rocks as pillows. Yeah, that is a good one. The first one always comes to mind. You know, the posers will talk about the cherry tree. Speaking of fruit, Johnny Appleseed, yeah. Genghis Khan. Make a Venn diagram, what do they have in common? Start with, what don't they have in common? Johnny Appleseed wore a pan on his head. Genghis Khan wore some kind of weird towel thing. Like I have a head mouth. It's just evolved to be a buff. What do they share in common? Nomadic visionaries 
spreading their seed. <laughs>